For many years, scientists have bragged about the predictability and reliability of science. Unlike religion, its claims are measurable and backed with data. But what happens when science discovers an astonishing feature deep in space that looks like heaven? According to reports and images from the Hubble Space Telescope, an eerie floating white city nicknamed the City of God has been seen in deep space, and NASA has been quiet about it for years. What is this City of God? How did the Hubble Space Telescope capture images of it? And why is NASA quiet about it? Join us in this video as we look at how NASA's terrifying new discovery shocks all religious people. Humans have always been fascinated with big things. That's why we love big houses and love to conquer new lands and territories. It is why we want to go to Mars or live on the moon. It is why the first man to walk in space did so and why in 1946, Dr. Lyman Spitzer Jr., an astrophysicist, proposed the idea of putting a telescope in space. This idea was somewhat revolutionary at the moment, as it was before a rocket was ever launched into space. The result of this idea was the creation of the Hubble Space Telescope and the hundreds of fantastic images of space and discoveries we have received from it. In fact, since its mission began in 1990, Hubble has made more than 1.3 million observations. The telescope is named after the famous U.S. astronomer Edwin Hubble. Hubble's observations of variable stars in distant galaxies helped confirm the fact that the universe was expanding and supported the Big Bang Theory. Since its launch in 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope has given us amazing pictures of space and celestial objects and has also helped us form a deeper understanding of how the universe works. So when news came out in 1994 about Hubble discovering heaven, a city in space with 50-foot tall beings, it was shocking, to say the least. This discovery came after scientists repaired Hubble's primary mirror. After launch, scientists discovered that the primary mirror had spherical aberration, one which reduced the clarity with which the telescope could capture images. In 1994, Dr. Marcia Masson, an author and researcher, found herself in possession of a top-secret photo the Hubble Space Telescope had taken of what is presumed to be heaven, later called the City of God. However, despite the media coverage, NASA refused to acknowledge the existence of the photo. In her report, Dr. Masson said she had someone on the inside at NASA who said that the telescope beamed hundreds of photos back to the command center at Goddard Space Flight Center in Greenbelt on December 26. In the pictures, a massive and wide white city can be seen floating eerily against the black backdrop of space. The expert quoted NASA sources as saying that the city is definitely heaven because life as we know it couldn't possibly exist in icy, airless space. In an interview with reporters, Dr. Masson said, this is it, this is the proof we've been waiting for. Through an enormous stroke of luck, NASA aimed the Hubble telescope at precisely the right place at precisely the right time to capture these images on film. I'm not particularly religious, but I don't doubt that somebody or something influenced the decision to aim the telescope at that particular area of space. Was that someone or something God himself? Given the vastness of the universe and all the places NASA could have targeted for study, that would certainly appear to be the case. NASA spokesman declined to comment on the author's report, pending further analysis of the photographs received on December 26. In spite of official silence, agency insiders concede that NASA has discovered something that might alter the future of all mankind. There were also reports that then-President Bill Clinton and Vice President Al Gore had taken a keen personal interest in the photographs and had requested daily briefings. In a follow-up interview, Dr. Masson said, the Hubble Space Telescope was designed to photograph images as far away as the edge of the universe, but a lens flaw prevented it from doing so until shuttle astronauts corrected the defect during a recent mission. When they finished their work, the telescope trained its enormous glass eye on the outer reaches of the universe. From what I understand, the first images it received were nothing more than kaleidoscopic bursts of color and light. As adjustments were made and the focus sharpened, NASA analysts couldn't believe their eyes. 
After checking and rechecking the data, they concluded that the images were authentic. They also theorized that the city couldn't possibly be inhabited by life as we know it. The only logical explanation was that the souls of the dead inhabited the city. As one of my sources put it, we found where God lives. There were rumors that NASA had forwarded photographs to Pope John Paul II at his request, but Vatican sources will neither confirm nor deny it. Dr. Masson, who obtained copies of a single photograph from her NASA sources, says the space agency's next move will be most revealing. This is a chance for NASA to come clean with the public and tell us everything it knows, she said. However, there has been intense backlash from certain quarters about this insider leak from NASA. Some claim the story is spurious and lacks concrete evidence. To start with, no NASA scientist or ESA, European Space Agency, scientist, has ever said that the celestial object called the City of God in the photo really exists, or even not. And although the data shows which galaxy this galaxy is and how far away it is from us, no real astronomer has confirmed this picture. Also, since the picture emerged 30 years ago, no real astronomy or physicist has ever published a research paper on the subject, and neither has it popped up in serious scientific discourses. However, NASA has not in any way sought to officially clarify or affirm this photo. Another argument for many critics is that every picture taken by the Hubble telescope can be used to weave any kind of story because every picture is strange and full of mystery. But while many have been going back and forth over this story for a while now, Hubble has gone on to great heights and lengths, literally. Hubble has helped scientists resolve some age-old problems in astronomy while also raising new questions. Some of these results have required new theories to explain them. One of its primary mission targets was to measure distances to the Cepheid variable stars more accurately than before and, thus, constrain the value of the Hubble constant. This is the measure of the rate at which the universe is expanding, which is also related to its age. Prior to the launch of the Hubble Space Telescope, estimates of the Hubble constant typically had errors of up to 50%, but Hubble measurements of Cepheid variables in the Virgo cluster and other distant galaxy clusters provided a measured value with an accuracy of plus or minus 10%. For many scientists, this range is more acceptable as it is consistent with other more accurate measurements made since Hubble's launch using other techniques. As such, the estimated age is now about 13.7 billion years. But before the Hubble telescope, scientists predicted an age ranging from 10 to 20 billion years. While Hubble helped to accurately estimate the age of the universe, it also turned upside down theories about its future. Astronomers from the High z Supernova Search Team and the Supernova Cosmology Project used ground-based telescopes and the Hubble Space Telescope to observe distant supernova and uncovered evidence that, far from decelerating under the influence of gravity, the expansion of the universe is instead accelerating. As a result of their work, three members of these two groups would later be awarded Nobel Prizes for their discovery. The cause of this acceleration remains poorly understood, but has been given the term dark energy. The dark refers to the fact that it is unable to be directly seen and detected by our current scientific instruments. The super sharp pictures and detailed breakdowns of light from Hubble were perfect for spotting black holes hanging out in the centers of nearby galaxies. Back in the early 1960s, scientists thought black holes might be hiding somewhere in some galaxies. And by the 80s, they'd even discovered a number of good black hole candidates. But thanks to Hubble, it has been shown that black holes are probably common to the centers of all galaxies. The Hubble programs further established that the masses of the nuclear black holes and the properties of the galaxies are closely related. With the help of Hubble Deep Field, Hubble Ultra Deep Field, and Hubble Extreme Deep Field images, the Hubble Space Telescope has enabled scientists to be able to peer into the universe for decades. They have used Hubble's unmatched sensitivity at visible wavelengths to create images of small patches of sky that are the deepest ever obtained at optical wavelengths. The images reveal galaxies billions of light years away, thereby providing information about the early universe 
and have accordingly generated a wealth of scientific papers. The Wide Field Camera 3 improved the view of these fields in the infrared and ultraviolet, supporting the discovery of some of the most distant objects yet discovered, such as Max 0647 JD. Also on March 3, 2016, researchers using Hubble data announced the discovery of the farthest confirmed galaxy to date, GNZ11, which Hubble observed as it existed roughly 400 million years after the Big Bang. Then, there was the collision of comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 with Jupiter in 1994 that came at a very fortunate time for astronomers, as it came just a few months after servicing Mission 1 had restored Hubble's optical performance. Hubble's images of the planet were sharper than any taken since the passage of Voyager 2 in 1979 and became very important in studying the dynamics of the collision of a large comet with Jupiter, an event believed to occur once every few centuries. In March 2015, researchers announced that measurements of aurorae around Ganymede, one of Jupiter's moons, revealed that it has a subsurface ocean. By using Hubble to study the motion of its aurorae, the researchers determined that a large saltwater ocean was helping to suppress the interaction between Jupiter's magnetic field and that of Ganymede. They estimate the ocean to be about 100 kilometers or 60 miles deep and trapped beneath a 150 kilometers or 90 miles ice crust. The Hubble Space Telescope has also been used to study objects in the outer reaches of the solar system, including the dwarf planets Pluto, Eris, and Sedna. In June and July 2012, Hubble was instrumental in helping U.S. astronomers discover Styx, a tiny, fifth moon orbiting Pluto. From June to August 2015, Hubble was used to search for a Kuiper Belt object, KBO target for the New Horizons Kuiper Belt Extended Mission, KEM, when similar searches with ground telescopes failed to find a suitable target. This targeted search resulted in the discovery of at least five new KBOs, including the eventual key ISM target, 486958 Arakoth, that New Horizons performed a close flyby of on January 1st, 2019. In April 2022, NASA announced that astronomers were able to use images from HST to determine the size of the nucleus of comet Bernardinelli-Bernstein, which is the largest icy comet nucleus ever seen by astronomers. Scientists have estimated that the nucleus of Bernardinelli-Bernstein has an estimated mass of 50 trillion tons, which is 50 times the mass of other known comets in our solar system. Hubble's capability extends to capturing significant astronomical events, including supernovae. On December 11, 2015, it took an image of the predicted reappearance of a supernova named Refsdal. This phenomenon was forecasted by calculating various mass models of a galaxy cluster whose gravitational pull distorted the supernova's light. Initially observed in November 2014 within galaxy cluster Max J149.5 plus 2223, as part of Hubble's Frontier Fields program, the supernova's light took approximately 5 billion years to reach Earth. However, due to the gravitational lensing effect of the galaxy cluster, the light from the supernova behind it took an additional 5 billion years to reach us, as evidenced by their distinct redshifts. Remarkably, instead of a single image, the gravitational lensing produced four images of the supernova, forming an Einstein cross. Anticipating this phenomenon, early lens models predicted the reappearance of a fifth image by the end of 2015, which indeed occurred as Refsdal re-emerged as forecasted. In March 2019, observations from the Hubble Space Telescope and data from the European Space Agency's Gaia Space Observatory were combined to determine that the mass of the Milky Way galaxy is approximately 1.5 trillion times the mass of the Sun, a value intermediate between prior estimates. Other discoveries made with Hubble data include protoplanetary disks proplides, in the Orion Nebula, evidence for the presence of extrasolar planets around Sun-like stars, and the optical counterparts of the still mysterious gamma-ray bursts. Using gravitational lensing, Hubble observed a galaxy designated Max 2129-1, approximately 10 billion light-years from Earth. 
Max 2129-1 subverted expectations about galaxies in which new star formation had ceased, a significant result for understanding the formation of elliptical galaxies. In 2022, Hubble detected the light of the farthest individual star ever seen to date. The star, WHL0137 LS, nicknamed Arendelle, existed within the first billion years after the Big Bang. It will be observed by NASA's James Webb Space Telescope to confirm that Arendelle is indeed a star. Here's a timeline of the major innovations made by the Hubble Space Telescope. In 1990, the Hubble Space Telescope was launched after almost 20 years of planning. In 1993, when Hubble was first launched, a mistake with its mirror caused a large blurring effect that inhibited it from being able to fulfill and reach its mission targets. A servicing mission was then sent to Hubble on the Endeavour Space Shuttle to fix the problem and help it fulfill its function. In 1994, Hubble made it possible for astronomers to witness a rare cometary impact, taking snapshots of a huge cloud of debris left behind Comet Shoemaker-Levy 9 after it collided with Jupiter. Hubble also provided conclusive evidence for the existence of supermassive black holes in the centers of galaxies by observing the galaxy M87. In 1996, Hubble took the famous photo of the Eagle Nebula, which was later named Pillars of Creation. In 2001, scientists were able to use the Hubble telescope to measure the elements in the atmosphere of the exoplanet HD 29458b. In 2004, the Hubble Ultra Deep Field was released, making it possible for astronomers to peer further back into time, having a clear view of the origins of the universe and what happened a few million years after the Big Bang Theory. In 2005, Hubble took pictures of two previously unknown moons orbiting Pluto. In 2007, through observations from the Hubble telescope, scientists were able to ascertain that the dwarf planet Eris was bigger than Pluto. Hubble also assisted in the production of a 3D map showing the distribution of dark matter in the universe. In 2008, Hubble took a picture of the exoplanet Fomalhaut b, the first visual image of an exoplanet. In the same year, Hubble found organic molecules on an extrasolar planet, and the telescope's 100,000th orbit around Earth was celebrated. In 2010, Hubble images revealed distant galaxies with likely redshifts, which is a measure of distance used in cosmology, greater than eight, showing the universe as it was when it was less than a tenth of its current age. Hubble also photographed evidence of a collision between two asteroids that had never been seen before. In 2011, Hubble made its millionth observation, which was a spectroscopic analysis of the exoplanet Hat P7b. The 10,000th paper based on Hubble data was also published this year. In 2012, Hubble captured a couple of images that showed seven primitive galaxies from a distant population that formed more than 13 billion years ago. The images showed the galaxies as they were when the universe was less than 4% of its present age. In that same year, Hubble broke its own record when it discovered an object from when the universe was only 3% of its present age, only 470 million years after the Big Bang. In 2013, using Hubble's magnification abilities, scientists were able to determine for the first time the true color of a planet orbiting another star and found water vapor erupting off the surface of Jupiter's moon Europa. In 2014, Hubble became the first telescope ever to observe an asteroid disintegrating and revealed the most detailed weather map for an exoplanet ever. In 2015, Hubble observed for the first time the effect of gravitational lensing on a distant exploding star where the powerful gravity of a foreground galaxy acts like a cosmic magnifying glass, enhancing and splitting the image into a cross-shaped pattern of light. The City of God has been a bone of contention in religious and scientific fields it is one of the few times when science seems unable to explain its discoveries. So while many might have questions or doubts about what Hubble saw, one thing is certain. Whatever was in the picture is real. And that's just the one millionth and one reason to believe that weird things do happen and exist. 
thanks for watching another episode of Voyager. While you're still here, make sure to click the video on your screen for more mind-blowing videos about space.